Hey, welcome to another Fuji Photo Walk. Today, I take you on a visual journey of the SeaTac Airport from gate C-16 to S-7. Let's get into it. So a few weeks ago, I went out to California to visit with some family, and my goal was, during that time, to go out and do a proper Fuji photo walk, maybe, you know, downtown where we were at, but things didn't work out. So I thought, what better place to do a Fuji photo walk than in an airport? Well, on my flight home, I thought that I was going to have a two-hour layover, but my original flight got delayed by an hour and a half. So really, I had 30 minutes to get off a plane, find a restroom, navigate from terminal C to terminal S, which includes finding an underground tram tunnel to get to this new uh, terminal. And I thought to myself, how can I fit capture airport life into that whole equation in just 30 minutes? Today, this is my attempt at that. Now there was only one way to make this work and that was just run and gun. I had 30 minutes to, to get off of my plane and make it onto my connecting flight. Every photo that I took had to be while I was moving to my next destination. No time to wait for a better moment or set up uh, the perfect composition. I just had to go with whatever I got. And in a Fuji photo walk first, I used aperture priority to shoot all these images as it allowed me to, uh, you know, not have to spend time adjusting my settings and still be able to carry all of my camera bags and equipment and essentially just point and shoot. So let's talk about my goal for the shoot. First and foremost, I just wanted to capture a few photos, right? I knew that I wasn't gonna have any time to really photograph anything with intention, but the photos that I wanted to capture, I wanted to focus on one element and that was chaos. I don't consider myself a world traveler, but I've been on my share of airplanes. And there's one thing that I always love about airports, and it's how busy everybody seems to be. Like that scene from Home Alone when everybody's taken off to catch their flight to go to Paris. That is my dream. There's something so romantic about the urgency and the mission that you have to accomplish to get to that plane, otherwise you're not going anywhere. So while I didn't get a welcome to Seattle sign uh, as I got off the plane, uh, this was the first photo that I captured right after I, I left the gate. And this was my first attempt at here's what an establishing shot could be. You see this and you instantly know where you are. You're in some sort of transit system and it's it's the people it's the luggage it's the it's the unique signage up at the top that we see that tells us exactly where we are so this was my use of a uh, of an establishing shot and you know while it's not my favorite photo it does help again tie together the the rest of the story Ever since 2007, when the iPhone hit the market, airports have been flooded with people constantly on their phones. And I get it. Anywhere where you have to wait, you're just going to naturally just get on your phone and kind of scroll for a little bit, catch up on email, you know, whatever it is. This right here is the one photo that I really wish that I could have spent more time on to perfect. While there's a lot of issues with this photo, I think that at its core, I got pretty close to what I wanted, but let me walk you through it. Now, when I was on the airplane, I made sure to go ahead and just preset all my settings so that I could just run, gun, shoot as quick as I could. And one of those decisions that I made was to set my ISO at 2500. Now, on Fuji X, it's not, it's not a big deal. You can still get really clean images at 2500. However, I was shooting in a film simulation, which was to emulate a pushed uh, 3200 speed film. 
So this image right here is very grainy and it's baked into the JPEG. However, this sort of thing only happens when you uh, give up control to your camera. If I would have been shooting in manual, the image would not have looked this way because straight out of camera, the image looked like this. So the camera wanted to expose for outside of the window, which underexposed every, everybody, leaving them in the shadow. Unfortunately, you couldn't see all the phone detail, so I had to bring up that shadow detail in post. So if I would have shot this image in manual, I would have opened it up to maybe one uh, 125th of a second. That would have brought in more than a stop of extra light. Uh, and then I wouldn't have to boost the shadows uh, in all of the people here and increase the subsequent grain at the with the final result. So does this mean that I'm gonna switch back and start shooting in RAW? No, it just means that when you shoot in an automatic mode, there are things that you have to give up and that you have to be okay with. It was a bit of a tangent there, wasn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the photo itself. Here's why I love this photo, right? We got this guy right here on his phone. We assume he's checking his mail, texting his kids, you know, hey, I'm coming home. We got this couple right here. There's an interaction between them sharing a phone. He's showing the photo to her. This photo could not have been captured a half a second later or a half a second earlier because of the gap right there between them. We got this lady back here on her phone as well. Pretty small in the image, but if you really look into it, you can see it. We got this guy bright and clear on his phone. This lady right here was also on her phone. We got this couple back here. They're just, you know, drinking a, a soda, enjoying their time. But then we got this guy and that guy both also on their phone. So in this photo, there are only two people not on their phone, but they're still doing something with their hands. This photo overall, I love it, but again, that extra, you know, 5% that if I would have spent time to shoot it in manual would have brought this photo closer to finished, uh, to, the, to the finished product that I saw in my head. As I said, airports, a very busy place. People going left to right, they're going all over the place. They're moving around and it's very, very fast. So this photo right here I loved because we have this traveler just hanging out right in front of this bookstore watching everybody else. And everybody else is just moving and it's rushing and it's very quick. And why I chose this bookstore was because when you think about books, you think to yourself, oh, how relaxing does that sound? This sounds so wonderful. I'll just be able to hang out and enjoy my time. And then we combine that with the chaos of everybody going in tons of different directions. I think that they go together very well. And then we have this couple over here and they're not moving, but clearly, you know, trying to read the charts of arrivals, departures, what gauge are they going to? That to me also says chaos. Nobody looks at you know the the TVs full of all the information and thinks to themselves very clearly laid out very enjoyable they think where am I going what gate do I go what airline is it chaos 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 that's all that I wanted in these photos and this shot right here I think I got it very happy with this photo Are we understanding the theme of chaos here? Because if not, I can go deeper into this photo. This photo happened actually entirely by accident. I turned on the neutral density, put my uh, f-stop to f4 to close off the amount of light so that I would have a long shutter speed. Again, shooting an aperture priority. So forcing my camera to choose a slower shutter speed by limiting the amount of light that I, that I gave the sensor. So while this photo wasn't taken with intention, this is not the photo that I wanted to capture, sometimes you get happy accidents. I've always felt that in the, uh, in the event of, of, of confusion or of chaos, I found myself extremely, probably too, too cool, calm and collected. So this kind of gives me a different perspective to airports. When I go to an airport, even though there's a million things going on, I feel very calm. I feel like I know exactly what I'm doing. So seeing this photo to me makes me feel um, anxious. It gives me anxiety. So this photo helps to me propel the story that once again, I was trying to convey with the theme of chaos. By doing these Fuji photo walks and by uh, doing a lot of wedding photography, one thing is very clear in the way that I take photos is that I try to tell a story over several photos, right? So every story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. Your everyday world, it needs conflict and it needs resolution. So in this 
scenario, I wish that I would have got uh, a photo of a welcome to Seattle Tacoma. I think I got a good deal of chaos photos, but then at the end, I wish that I would have got the a photo of the of the sign at the you know at the gate that says you know flight to Indianapolis boarding now. If I would have got those two photos, uh, I think overall this project would be uh, much more complete in, in, in what it is. So while it's always a good day when you can you know, get out and shoot a few frames, I really wish that I would have had just a little bit more time uh, to be able to capture these photos and truly tell a more complete story. But for me, what I got most out of this exercise was the reps in being able to uh, you know, take the photos and anticipate uh, action or moment before getting there. Uh, and not so much the photos. The photos were ancillary, right? It was the it was the the photography training. It was the photography training that was really the the most beneficial part of this entire Fuji photo walk for me. So would I do it again? In a heartbeat. So the point of all these Fuji photo walks is really to kind of push myself to get out and shoot things that maybe normally I wouldn't. They wouldn't traditionally be my wheelhouse. So it's a form of exercise. And this exercise made it acutely aware of how important it is to be able to, to do a run and gun, right? To be able to, uh, you know, just be walking and be focused on another task, see something, and then capture it right away. Because on top of like all the technical skills, you know, like composition, exposure, and all those things, the decisive moment, really anticipating what is going to happen is I think what sets apart uh, amateur photographers and professional photographers. And this exercise really pushed me into that realm of you, if, you, if you really wanna get a great photo, you have to anticipate what you're gonna see, you know, 30, 40 feet ahead of you before you even uh, take the photo. And the thing about making this work is that the stakes really have to be high. I wasn't even too close to my gate and I heard them say, hey, this is the last call. Uh, this is the last boarding announcement for the flight to Indianapolis. And if you don't make it, like we're about to close the doors. So if I had waited any longer, I wouldn't have made my flight. And those stakes really forced me to pay attention to those things around me and just be acutely aware of what it was that I wanted to capture and determine right away, do I want to capture that? Yes or no? And then move on. That is a valuable skill to have.